How's it going everyone and welcome back to another video on the YouTube channel and I want to welcome everyone to a brand new series on the channel here entitled How to Build a Go-Kart and basically in this series I'm going to use my experience from the year and a, almost two year long go-kart build that I took part of um, to share my experience and the things I learned from that build with you guys um, to help you either figure out if you want to do a build, if it's worth it for you, or if you're in the middle of doing a build, maybe help you get through some of the trials and tribulations that you're facing while doing the build. So what I'm going to be doing in this series is taking you guys all the way from the very beginning all the way to the very end of what it takes to build your own very custom go-kart on your own. And this channel is all about using your hands, doing things yourself, DIY, because I firmly believe that that is what you need to be successful in life, not just being a bookworm. Um, and that's my personal opinion. But, so what I mean by that is I'm going to take you guys all the way from the very beginning of the motivation that you should have or why you think you might want to build your own go-kart versus buying one and what's in it for you for benefiting you versus just buying one and then take you throughout the build all the way to the end process of you know how to tune it and how to do things like that and then videos in between that have to do with where do you get parts um, the design, that is by far the most popular question that I receive on the channel, is designing the go-kart. So many people ask me for questions, uh, so many people ask me questions for either this design of the go-kart or um, to help them design it, and I am more than happy to help you guys, which is why I am so excited to do this video series, because I think it's going to answer all of those questions that you guys have. I'm going to teach you how to use AutoCAD. If you don't have AutoCAD, I'm going to teach you how to use uh, just a, a computer software program that everyone has that will at least help you uh, design a frame, and like just kind of where to get inspirations for frame design, and like I said, where to get parts what tools you need, some fabrication tips, and things like that. So this, this video series is going to be absolutely awesome, um, especially for the maker community is what I call it. Um, people that are creative, that they design things and build things themselves. They Sometimes they'll do custom, they'll modify things that are different from the norm and how you normally do it. Um, so this video is for you guys and helping you figure out how to build a go-kart to answer all your questions and I am so stoked to get started so let's go ahead and get right into this. So now that we got the video intro to the series squared away, I'm going to be talking about what this first video is, is going to be about. And some of you might have guessed from the title of the video, uh, but this first video is really solely about why. Why should you build your own go-kart? Why should you take time to invest your precious time and money into projects like this? Doesn't even have to be a go-kart, you know, but that is obviously the focus of this series. Um, but just projects that are that force you to be creative, force you to think outside the box, force you to, um, you know, be a problem solver, and that's what really engineering is all about. And I'm not a professional engineer. I haven't graduated yet. I'm in my senior year, so I've gone through really three and a third years of engineering school. So I kind of, I, I would say that I have a pretty firm grasp on what the whole engineering world is about. And like I said in the earlier part of the video, that. To be successful, you really should do things with your hands, be creative, take part in projects. That is true to some extent. Now, it, it really depends on your major. Some majors, you know, when you apply for a job and you submit a resume, they're not going to care that you built a go-kart. They're not going to care that you um, did things with your hands or, or were creative and built something. Um, but for, for an engineering jobs or, you know, design jobs, things like that. This is the stuff that really makes you stand out from the rest of the people. And that is a that was one huge motivation for me is I wanted to stand out. Everyone that goes to engineering school has to go to class. Everyone has to get good grades. They have to pass the standardized tests, you know, like the FE exam and, and the PE exam. But what really makes you stand apart is when you do things as a team, and when you do things on your own, because it shows people that you have the initiative and the perseverance to 
go through and finish a project, not only to start it and, and think of a cool idea, but to have the motivation and drive and focus to finish it. Now this project took me almost two years really in the scheme of things to finish. It will be two years in December this year. Um, and that's, uh, when, you, when you go into a job interview, a lot of people, uh, you know, I've been in many interviews so far for internships, and one thing that they definitely look at is how focused and how driven you are. And that is a big factor in completing a project like this. Uh, just showing that you have the drive to, when you're committed to something to stick to it and to finish it. So I guess to sum everything up, really the first big motivation and why for me, and possibly the why for you, is it's a possible career building uh, project. Um, especially if you're in engineering or design or fabrication or some sort of trade school thing, welding, whatever it is, uh, auto body, auto, uh, auto repair, it just it helps you stand apart and it's a huge career building thing. It's on my resume so I got an internship this past summer and the thing that helped, I, I feel that helped me get it, get the internship was the fact that they saw that I had a go-kart, I call it a street cart, just to kind of make it a little more formal, on my resume, and it was an instant connection with the supervisors that were interviewing me. And they saw that I had built a go-kart, and they reminisced when they had driven go-karts when they were kids, so it kind of helps you form a connection with these people that are interviewing you, or helps you build connections during career fairs, things like that. So it's a huge career building thing. It shows people that you are, you are willing and you have the experience and the, the willpower to stand apart from the rest. So that is motivation number one, is that is a huge career building opportunity and to show how creative and how different you are in a positive way from everyone else that's applying for jobs, internships, whatever it may be. So really big motivating factor number two is just the, the scale of the project and, and and how much work was involved. It really pushed my limits. And there were times, I will be honest with you guys, there were times on this build where I wanted to throw in the towel, chuck my tools out of the garage, break some windows because I was frustrated at how things were going. It's gonna happen like that and you gotta be prepared for it. But in the end, it really helps you grow. It helps you grow to become more creative, more, uh, not, I guess more persevering, if that's how you describe it. Um, and it just, it really forces you to just bear down in tough situations and get to the end. And um, like I said, it just helps you grow. And if you're looking for something, like you feel like you're kind of doing the same thing, you know, you, I don't know, wh whatever you guys may be involved with, if you have jobs or if you're in school, um, something that could be a good and fun side activity is to do something like this. Now, I say this um, in that I built this thing completely from scratch. Like I, I started out with this blue painter's tape design on the ground here and some rough pencil sketches. And then that went into uh, an initial computer design, a revised computer design. And then it went to a build list of parts and it became the go-kart it is today. So really, the, the, the true growth came from that I, it took me so long to build this thing. You could go out and buy, you know, maybe for those that are a little scared because it is a big project and it can be a little scary and overwhelming to think, wow, I've got to design this by myself. I have no engineering or no design experience and I have no idea how to do that. So maybe a good starting point would be to buy a frame, buy a used go-kart that needs some, some good TLC and uh, that will be a good project for you to practice on before you actually jump into doing a full on custom build. Um, and that, that's a good starting point if you feel overwhelmed but you still wanna take part in something like that. So really in some motivating factor two here is personal growth. And motivating factor one was showing your potential to people outside of um, your own self, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, I guess this one really would come before motivating factor one, but um, this is to help you grow maybe before you start applying for jobs, before you go into engineering school, or while you're in it, and before you apply to grad school, which is exactly where I am. I'm applying for grad school, so I think 
having this on my resume, showing professors that I am dedicated to projects that I invest my time in will help me get into grad school. Um, so really this is personal growth, self growth, help you build your self esteem and your self confidence when it comes to showing what you can do. Um, for your own personal benefits, showing that you have the capacity to sit down and be creative, design something, um, learn. I mean, that was the biggest, <clears throat> excuse me, the biggest thing on this project was learning. So researching YouTube videos, researching online, looking at what other people did. And that is, you know, just learning. And it's a big learning experience and it really helps you build your own personal knowledge to help you grow and really push yourself outside your comfort zone. This pushed me way outside my comfort zone. I had never done anything on this magnitude before. And now, now that I have done it and it's completed, I feel that much better and I feel that much more proud of myself for being able to do that. And when I go on to future projects that maybe have the same magnitude of uh, difficulty or even greater, I can tell myself, I've been there before, I've done that, I've finished it, I can easily do this. So it's a big personal motivating factor for self growth. So motivating factor three is really kind of a piggyback off two and on personal growth and, and pushing your, your bounds and your limits and your comfort zone in that it's a huge learning experience. And I guess this is kind of the umbrella motivation factor because it covers all areas really. But really, the go-kart is a huge learning experience and it has helped me on future projects that I've been involved with at school. So when uh, I'm on a team of people and they ask, well, what can you bring to the team? Well, I can say I've got design experience with AutoCAD. I've got, you know, sketching experience, you know, just hand drawing. I've got, you know, uh, it, beginning welding experience. I've got pretty uh, intermediate uh, metal fabrication experience. So it really just adds to your personal um, armory, I guess, of all the tools that you have to, to give to other people. Um, so like I said, this is kind of an umbrella motivation factor. It covers all of them, but just specifically, I wanted, the reason why I wanted to throw this in there is specifically, like I said, I grew my AutoCAD experience a lot during this project. I learned a lot about how to design the frame on AutoCAD and how to make it easier to build something and instead of just conventionally doing it by pencil and paper because I mean a lot of people are like oh AutoCAD you don't need that you can do it by pencil and paper well when you really get to know AutoCAD you can learn what the benefits are from using it and it really helps you be more efficient and show um, you kind of have a more professional approach at doing projects. And then the second thing is I got a good, about, good amount of welding experience. I'm not saying I'm a pro welder because I know there are some people out there like, your welds suck, your welds suck. <laughs> That's not the point. I got some welding experience and I really, I, you know, with welding, it's kind of like something you're like, oh, I could never do that. And so you actually just try it and do it. And that's why I love this project. I went out and bought a cheap, the cheapest welder that money can buy, literally, from Harbor Freight Tools for 90 bucks. And some people may say, oh, it's not gonna give you good welds. That's not the point. The point was, was to get my feet wet in the welding uh, side of design and fabrication. And I learned so much and my welding improved greatly from the very beginning as to when I first popped open the welder and started practicing on scrap metal um, to the very end product when I had to design or I had to weld things that needed to be strong. Um, so my welding did get a lot better. Is it on a professional level or is it on a very advanced level? Probably not because I haven't spent that much time. It's only really a year of welding experience in the scheme of things. So. Um, you know, you got to have years upon years of experience to be considered expert or advanced. But the, the point is, is that it helps you just jump into things and just try it. You know, you never know what you're gonna, what's going to happen until you literally just try it. And the last thing is really metal fabrication and just trial and error. The do's and don'ts of um, measuring things, welding things, cutting things, um, drilling holes. Like, I, that is one of the things that is the most painstaking uh, labor of building this, in my opinion, was drilling holes and make sure, making sure that they lined up with one another. Because when you would drill a hole and the bolt wouldn't go through because this hole was fine, but then the other hole was misaligned, 
it was literally the most frustrating thing ever. And so I learned a lot of tips and tricks on how to avoid things like that and how to be better. So metal fabrication was a huge thing and that yet again is gonna help me on a project I'm involved in this year that is gonna, I'm the only one on the team that knows how to weld and I'm really the only one on the team that has a decent amount of metal fabrication experience. So like I said, it adds to your personal arsenal, your personal armory of tools and, and skills that you can bring to other teams and for future projects for yourself. Okay, so what is motivating factor number four? Motivating factor four is just kind of the personal satisfaction of building something completely from scratch and then being able to drive it and have it function and knowing that this thing that you're sitting on going 30 however many miles an hour is something that you built. Now, that could either be scary for most people or some people or it could be really awesome and for me it was really awesome because I I trusted myself I trusted my skills and that I took a lot of I was very deliberate in making sure that it was safe safety was the number one factor on this build um, which is why uh, it's so low it's so wide and it doesn't go 90 miles an hour I'm gonna try and make it go a little faster those are videos to come but it's not gonna go 100 miles an hour. That is a little taking it too, taking a little too far. But like I said, uh, and this really goes for um, when you build something completely yourself. And it could, for some people, they could find a lot of personal satisfaction out of buying a used scrap, uh, excuse me, scrap go kart frame and really revamping it and restoring it. You could very well get a lot of personal satisfaction from that if you don't feel like you're up to the task of building something completely from scratch. Um, but if you do feel like you're up to the task and you have the the knowledge of wealth or the wealth of knowledge to do so, it is one of the most rewarding feelings ever. And knowing that, um, and this will answer the question for many people that ask why I won't distribute the plans for this. Um, when you build something like this that's custom, that maybe you took some designs from other things and meshed them all together, um, but when you have something that's one of one, it's a very, very rewarding feeling. Knowing that there's no other go-kart or functioning, running, driving go-kart in the world that shows, that has this type of design, has these strut bracing designs, this suspension design, rear end design, it's all custom and it's unique, one of one, no one else like it in the world. And that is a very rewarding feeling that I got from building this, which is why, you know, I'm not trying to be selfish, but it was just one of the big motivation factors as to why I didn't just go out and buy a frame, a used frame, and refurbish that. That's the reason why I wanted to build it completely from, completely from scratch, so I could say that this is completely custom, there's nothing else like it, like it one of one. And that's why I've chosen not to distribute the, one of the reasons why I've chosen not to distribute the plans and when you build something like that, you'll know what I mean. You'll, you, people will ask you, hey, can I have the plans for that? Like, if your whole motivation factor the entire time was to make it one of one and unique, you, 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 you don't want to really want to do that because, not because you're selfish or you're stingy, but just because like it's very unique and it's a very rewarding feeling for you to do something like that. So that is big motivation factor four is the personal satisfaction of one, having something that is completely custom and unique and there's nothing else like it in the world. And two, driving something that you spent so much time on. You can go out and buy a car from a dealership. You can go out and buy a used car and you know, change the oil or change the this coil over, or whatever, you can work on that. But that doesn't give you the same satisfaction as driving something that is completely built by yourself and maybe some input from friends. But just going out and buying a car and, and doing modifications to it, changing the suspension, changing the look a little bit, like yeah, so some people that that is that gives a lot of personal satisfaction. But to people in the maker and build their community that really like to do things with their hands. Uh, the personal satisfaction comes from driving something from the first time. I'll never forget the feeling from the first time I started this thing up and got behind the wheel. It was very scary. Uh, I didn't trust it yet. I didn't entirely trust myself yet. Um, but driving it for the first time after spending literally over a year building it, um, 
was was so rewarding, and uh, I encourage you to strive to 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 find that same uh, rewarding feeling and uh, feeling of satisfaction. Okay, motivating factor number five, the last and final one. I don't want to draw out this video too long already than what it is, but motivating factor five is it's simple. It's fun. In the in the end, it is fun. There's going to be times that's frustrating. There's going to be times where the build will not go your way. Things will go wrong. Things will not line up properly. You'll design something thinking it'll work and it doesn't. I went through that many times and those are um, personal examples of what I went through will be used in later parts of uh, different videos in the series on how to avoid things and, and, and things like that. But in the end, it's fun. It's a great learning factor. Um, if you truly enjoy building things and designing things and, and getting out and working on your hands rather than just you know, playing video games or, or just, I don't know, just sitting around and doing nothing, it's a, it's, it's a great feeling, at least for me, to be productive and knowing that I'm putting time in to making something that is one, going to benefit my future career opportunities, it's going to benefit my personal uh, knowledge bank of skills, and it, it, it's, it's a great time to uh, spend time with friends. I mean, Will, uh, you know, some, some of you that have been here for a while and saw the very first few videos and some of the videos later on, Will was here for a lot of it, and it was great bonding time and great, you know, time just to hang out with friends. Matt Burns and, and uh, both Matts, you know, they were here to help me through it and some other friends as well. And it's just really cool sharing that experience with them, working late into the night, working long days, uh, trying to get this thing running, and then finally getting it running and sharing it. Like that one day where we took it out to that road and just, you know, did uh, time trial runs and just really just ran this thing to its full potential um, after spending so much time working on it. It's a very fun feeling. So, you know, motivating factor five is very simple. It's just, it's it's true raw fun that you cannot get from anything else um, because you get the personal satisfaction of building your own thing, running it, and doing it all with friends or family members. You know, this is great. Uh, this, is, this would be a great project for like a father and son if they're looking for something to you know bond together um, anything like that it's fun go-karts are fun you don't have to you don't have to convince anyone that a go-kart is fun that's why they have go-kart tracks where you can go out and and pay to have fun but with this I mean you got to pay to build it but you don't have to pay to use it so that is a huge motivating factor that it's literally so much fun Okay, so that wraps up the five motivating factors as to why I went about completely building my own go-kart completely from scratch. And um, before I go, I want to share a quick quote from a very legendary person in the car industry. Um, and it, it was something that I saw on Facebook the other day that was very revealing. And it, it nails this video on the head to the T. Um, let me find it here. All right, so the quote here from the very legendary Chip Foose. Um, for those that don't know who Chip Foose is, he's a legend in the uh, custom hot rod industry. Uh, he had a TV show, very successful TV show for the longest time called Overhaulin, where they would take people's cars and without them knowing it, they would restore them and make them very pristine and beautiful. Um, so he's a big idol to many in the car industry, at least for the hot rod and customization. He's a designer, he's very good at drawing, so he knows the essence of being creative. Um, so he, quote, said, The biggest crime happening in America is the fact that they pulled all of these shop classes out of schools. Kids today, their dream isn't to build something, it is to buy something, end quote. And that can't be more true. I, you know, and through high school, I did not have a shop class. There was no encouragement of being creative and getting your hands dirty, getting dirt under your fingernails and doing stuff like that. Um, like the quote says, people just want to buy stuff. They want to go to car dealerships and buy their own cars. They want to go to places and just buy things. 
buy dirt bikes, whatever it is, they don't have the passion to motivate and motivation to work on and build things anymore. So if that isn't enough for it right there to motivate you to build your own go-kart, I don't know what is, um, but it just sums up this video very nicely. So. I wanted to thank you guys very much for tuning in to this new series here on the channel. I am beyond excited to share this uh, wealth of knowledge that I have with you guys about the go-kart build. I apologize if this video was somewhat dry and just a lot of me blabbering on, but um, this is kind of the nitty gritty one to set the foundation, if you will, for all of the videos to come to lead to the final product of getting to a finished running and driving go-kart that is an absolute blast to drive as you've probably seen in my past videos the thrill and excitement is just on a whole new level so thank you all very much for watching if you have any questions about the content in this video or any other video you found on my channel please feel free to leave it in the comment section below and as always i'm happy to answer them for you i take a lot of time to go through the comments and notifications that i get to answer all the questions and feedback you guys have so Thanks again guys very much for watching. Stay tuned and subscribe if you haven't already for the next video in the series. It won't be the video necessarily right after this one. They'll be mixed in with other videos of me working on the go-kart, doing my car with the, the Mercedes here and other things around cars, but they will be coming now that the series has started. So stay tuned for that. Be excited because it's gonna be fun and you're gonna learn a lot. So thank you all very much again. I know that's the third time I've said that, but I will see you guys in the next video. And now I'm stuck because the cart is elevated off the ground. Why as to I pff, wraps up the five motivating factors, five motivating factors.